at your service. Yay, it's Mr. Wara! What was that? Did I hear some booze in the background? Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> Hey, my wonderful math friends, welcome aboard to another math video. And look what we got going on today here. Oh my goodness, what's this thing on our page? You know, you look very, very familiar to me. Yes, ah, you were in a recent video. I thought so. Mr. Crayfish. Yes, I remember you, you, yeah, you're a little scavenger. That's right. Oh, you can see our topic today is all about percents. Look at those big bold letters. We are focusing on percents. So, sorry, fella, we need to get you out of the way here because you're kind of blocking some of our words here. Wait, 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 wait. What are you... Hey! What are you doing with my little percent symbol? Come on, my goodness. I told you they were scavengers. Okay, let's kind of get you out of the way. All right, don't take it too personal. All right, breathe, breathe. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at what our objective is. This is our learning target, and it is... Review finding a percent of a quantity as a rate per 100. And it says solve problems involving finding the whole given a part and the percent. And that's what we're going to be doing today is looking at those items. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's just go to the next page, right? Why wait? Bing. Okay, here we are. Okay. Okay. You're going to stay along to watch. That's fine. No worries. Okay. So I'm looking at this here, and it says, number one says, if 5 is 20% of a value, what is that value? Justify your answer with a model. Now, I can see by just looking at that problem right there, that's, it could uh, be intimidating, yes? Because it seems like it's almost even backwards. If 5 is, I can think of is is like equals. So it's almost like you're saying that equals, and it's in the front of the problem, 20% of a value, you know, that can be kind of confusing for some people. So let's first do this. This is really, really important. Let's first realize that there's three parts to this problem. We've been learning about a whole part, okay, and this is important. Sometimes we just call it whole, but we have the whole part, and then we actually have the part of the whole. Uh-oh, this is getting sloppy. It might go in your mouth. Don't eat the letters, please. Thank you. Okay, and then we have the percent. And those are kind of the three things we're looking at. Now, by looking at this problem, you can see that they gave us the 20%. So, check. We have that part. Now, it also says here, this is where it could be confusing. If 5 is 20% of a value. Well, the fact is it's 20% of a value and that when you do that, it's going to equal 5. Let's you know that, first of all, yeah, this is, this is like the whole part. Uh, and we don't know what that is because it's just saying of a value, of a number. Okay, and the part that we do have, the part of the whole, is the 5, all right, because it's saying that it is. Another way you can think of it is it's really the problem could be written this way. 20% of, and that value, we don't know what it is, is going to equal 5. That's really what our equation is saying. But, you know, it says we need a model, so let's just go ahead and draw a model. I think I'm just going to draw across here. Ooh, that line was really crooked there, Mr. Wara. I know. So here I have the percent. Here I have 100. I don't have that whole part here. That's what we don't have. Uh, these here, I'm just going to put my little pound sign. These are the numbers. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of think of, well, if I'm trying to find 20%, maybe I could just break up my number line for the percent into 20s here. So I'm just going to go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And so here I have my 20%. Now it does say when I do take 20% of that number, that we don't know what it is, it does equal 5. So I could actually put that 5 right above. Hmm. Okay, now I'm looking at it going, well, well wait a second. If 20% is 5, well, then 40% is double that. It can't change to a number that's not following this pattern. Wouldn't it just be 10? 40% of that value of that number should be 10. Well, if I keep doing that, what's going to happen here is I'm going to end up with what that number was. But is that really the correct number? Well, Let's look at that. Let's set it up as a proportion. 20% is 20 to 100. It's 20 over 100. You guys probably remember that from a previous lesson. And so we just make that equal to, we didn't have the whole part, but we did have the part up above. So here we didn't know what that was. And now I look at them like, well, what would I need to divide 20 to get to 5? Would that just be 4? And then if I take 100 divided by 4, yeah, 25, like a quarter and a dollar. So now I have 5 to 25 is an equivalent ratio to 20 to 100. And does that make sense? Well, it does because, look, 
25 is the whole part, and there was 25, and 5 was that 20% value, that first 20%. The next 20% would be 10, and it would work its way up to 100% of 25 would be 25. Okay, I hope that made some sense for you there, my jungle friends. Let's go to the next one. Whoa, hey, look at this here. Oh my goodness, this is Jacob is saving money. You're famous. Yeah, to buy a new skateboard. I don't know if that's Jacob up there. I don't know. Let's bring this guy down. This guy doing anything special? Woo! Hey, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right on, buddy. Okay. He's wearing the protective gear. you got to give him credit. He has his helmet. He's got his elbow pads, knee pads. Yeah, very cool. All right, let's get to the problem. Yeah, Mr. Wara, let's get to the problem. It says Jacob is saving money to buy a new skateboard. The cost, and of course, you know what, Jacob? He's our skateboard master in our class. That's right. So if we have any questions about skateboards or skateboarding, Jacob's the guy. Anyway, it says the cost of the skateboard is $180, and he has saved 40% so far. How much more money does he need to buy the skateboard? I know that's a great question. So let's go ahead and do what we have been doing when we were starting to divide the problem up kind of in pieces, thinking of, okay, what's the whole part? What's the percent and what is the part? Well, it's given us a percent here. So it's given us that part. So we're good there. And it looks like since we're talking about the cost of the skateboard, it's $180. This seems like then it would be the whole part. So we have the whole and the percent. So what are we missing? That's right, we're just missing that part. However, with this particular problem, we could figure out what the part is here. We could figure out what 40% is of $180. But it's not what the question's asking us though. It's asking us how much more money does he need? And when you see that much more money, I know you guys are thinking, yeah, that must be, we're going to need to subtract. So maybe what we could do here is we can figure out how much money 40% is of 180. And then we can subtract that money from the 180. So we can say, yo, Jacob, you have to save this much more money. Although I bet he already knows. Coming down to my take diagram, let's set up the model. I have percent down here. I have 100 over here. You notice that this tape diagram looks just like, like a double number line, doesn't it? I mean, just similar. We're comparing the two. We'll go ahead and put our money sign this time because we have money. Okay. Now, what do we have? We didn't have the part, but we did have the hole. And the hole is right here with 100%. And that's $180. Matched up $180. 100% of $180 is $180. You get the idea here, right? Now what we can do here is go ahead and break up our tape diagram. Now because we're trying to find 40%, well, we could just break up our tape diagram into sections so that we have 20%, right? We could do 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right? And then we have that. So this is going to be 20%, 40, 60, 80. Okay, cool. That worked out. Now we need to find out what 40%, and that's this amount right here, 40%, what these two sections are, of that 180. Now, definitely a lot of different ways you could come at this problem. I, I'm thinking what I want to do is I'm thinking, what if I were to just divide this up one more time? See, if I divide each one of these 20% up, then I get to a, a really favorable number. I, I like this number, 10, because our whole number system is based on the base 10. Base 10, we have 10 digits, no 10 fingers. So it's all based on the 10 and 10 makes things a little bit easier when we want to work with numbers. Because I look at 180, I guess my mind's thinking, well, if I broke up that into 10 equal pieces, it's like I'm saying, I'm taking that 180 and I'm just dividing it by 10. And because it's just a power of 10, I could just take one zero away. That's really just moving the decimal place, get 18. And 18 times 10 does equal 180. So by, by just putting in an 18, see that? Now I've actually figured the problem out just by dividing it into sections of 10%, because that's what we were doing, 10%, 20%, 30%. Now I have 18 in each 10% section, so 40% then is just going to then be 18 times four. I could take 18 times four and get the answer, but 18 doubles 36, and I know that 36 plus 36 is going to equal 72. So it equals $72. Now remember, that's 40% that he's, Jacob has saved so far. So he has saved $72 so far. But what we want to find out is this next section. See, this is how much more money he needs.
to save in order to get to his $180. But you can see here, well, now I'm just going to be doing 18, 18. I could add them all, do a multiplying. Or since we know it's 180, we could just take 180, subtract the 72, right? Because that's what we said we were going to do. Remember, this is money. I should have my money sign there. I'm going to regroup and I end up with 108. So $108. Oops. Oh, no, Mr. War. Okay, I'll fix that. Remember, you didn't see anything. That's right, you didn't. Okay, so now the amount of money that Jacob needs to save to get that skateboard is $108. Okay, I'm trying to think of, oh, we've probably, you know what, I haven't always been doing this, but we should probably always make our statement. Here, I'm going to put Jacob has saved, uh, how much did he save? He saved $72. Well, and I'm going to put $72, but remember, that was 40%. So he needs to save, and then that money was $108, which again, I'm just going to write over here. That is obviously, that's 60%. It didn't ask us for that, but we know that 40% and 60% would equal the whole thing. So, uh, so he needs to save $108. Okay, that pretty much kind of says that problem. Okay, cool. That was number two. Number three. Woohoo! Here's number three. Now, wow, we got a big, uh, looks like soccer going on here, huh? Okay, wow. Kick that ball hard. Where's the rest of that person? Come on down. Ah! Oh, oh, no, it's just a leg. Woo! Yeah, I hope I didn't scare you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just kind of how the image came. Just a leg, that's all okay? Cool, leg. You're kicking the ball. Let's go ahead and get to the problem, eh? It says, of the 50 girls on the Silver Wing elementary soccer team, that would be the Silver Wing Falcons. That's right. 20% um, also play on a travel team. How many of the girls on the Silver Wing team also play on a travel team? Justify your answer with a model. Okay. There's a lot there. We always break it apart, don't we? We do. We always break it apart. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at this problem and say, okay, of the 50 girls on the Silver Wing Elementary Soccer Team, it sounds like of the 50 girls, it sounds like there's my, my whole part, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like the whole. There's 50 all together. And look, I have my percent. So, I'm just writing that down. And remember those three pieces. We have the, the whole, the percent, and that's right. We have the part. So that's what we're trying to find. How many of the girls on the silver team also play on the travel team? So it's like of the girls. We need to find that part. Justify your answer with the model. Well, here's a tape diagram. Let's go ahead and set it up. Okay, so here we have our percent out of 100. Over here, what do we, we have the whole, so we can put the 50 girls right up here. Now again, look at this. We're looking for 20% that also play on the travel team. And again, when I think of that 20, I can't help but think, well, why don't we just break our tape diagram in those 20% sections. There's five because 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 100. Cool. And now when I'm looking at it, well, I'm seeing it. I'm starting to notice something right away. I mean, maybe, oh, I didn't put my, this is the number of girls. So we'll put there. And then, so I can't help but notice, well, there's five equal sections there. Well, look at that. There's 50. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be 10 in each section? Yeah, 10, 10, 10, 10. That makes 50. Going across 20%, 40%, 60%. Works out perfect. And, you know, we can still we check our work by doing our proportion. Let's do that. Okay, so I could set it up this way. I could say, well, you know what? We had 20%, and we already know that 20 over 100, that does equal 20%. That's the way it can be represented as a ratio. Well, that would be equal to then our whole part was 50. So I would put that down there because that was a total number of girls there. I just didn't know what part of those girls were also on the travel team. We just knew there was 20%. That's what makes this a nice little ratio. Well, you can look at that right away and probably see, well, 100, isn't that just divided by 2? Equals 50. So if I divide by 2 over here, look at that, I get 10. And look at that, it comes right back to our 10. Oh, don't you love it? Oh, that's beautiful. Mr. Wara, you do create art. Hey, what can I say? I do try. I do try to paint that beautiful picture. And math lets me do that. It really does. I love math. Okay, time to go on to another problem. Bing! Yes. Oh, no, what's this? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what are you guys doing? Oh, my God, what guys? Guys, where's my, where's my buddy? Where's my friend? Huh? Oh, there you are. I didn't know which one you were. Boy, you guys look all the same. And... Oh, they're all cousins, really? Yeah, brothers and sisters, sure. Uh-huh. What is that? I hear music in the background. 
Hey, hey, this is not a party, you guys. This is not a party. This is a mass video. Seriously, you gotta take, come on. Enough with the music. Cut the music, cut. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm really sorry. Now I hurt your feelings. Ooh, oh dear. Ah, yeah, get over it. <laughs> anyway, come on, we've got another problem to do. All right, now we have question number four. What is 25% of 80? Draw a model to justify your answer. Okay, I guess I could do that. 25% of 80. Well, we're just look at what we do with our equation. Remember, we have the percent, and here's the total because it's that of that 80. So again, we're trying to find the part. The way that we can find that part is just taking that 25% of our 80. That's going to equal the part that we're looking for. Okay. And as for a tape diagram, it does say justify. So I'm going to just go ahead and do this line here. This is fine for me. Draw this across. Do as straight as I possibly can. Ooh, that was actually pretty good for me. Percent. This is going to be 100. We keep setting this up because it's percent. Percent. Cent means 100. So that's literally what it means. And then we do have the whole part, so that 80 goes up here. Now, this is interesting because when we look at our percent, it's 25%. Ah, we've always been breaking up our, kind of like our number line or our tape diagram in these kind of 20% intervals, pieces. But now we need 25, so we could actually split it up into quarters. And this is 50%. Oh, and 50% is half, half of 80. Oh, that's 40 that worked out nice. Oh, and then half of a half, because that's what 25% is. Half of 40 is 20. Look at that. Game over. <laughs> so over. 20. Well, so I could double check. I did my model. My model looks great. Well, I could always do that 25%, right? And represent it as a ratio. 25 to 100. Just another way. That's going to equal, again, I have the whole part down here. I didn't have the part. Now, looking at 180, hmm. Not so friendly. But what we've done in the past is we just kind of said, you know what, maybe I could just, you know, put that in simplest form or in a simpler form. Well, if I divide by 25 at the top, I get 1. If I divide 100 by 25, there's four equal pieces there, I get 1 over 4. So that should still equal my other ratio because this is a ratio. So 4 times something is going to give me 80. Well, times 2 would be 8. So don't I just need to make a 0 and get 80? I have times 20. So I get 20 to 80. Ah, there it is, 20. That's what I was looking for right here. And that makes sense based on the problem too because if there were 80 all together, you can see the numbers such that it's very reasonable. Okay, cool. Oh my goodness, is that music I hear in the background? Yeah, you know what that means. Woo, another video comes to an end. Well, I appreciate you being here. If you want some more review on percents, there's another video. Look for it, review number two. Otherwise, my friends, like I always say, Live long and prosper.